post it to YouTube later. Oh. All right, let's get started. So welcome everybody to our fifth, um, actually first um, alumni panel. And we're, there's, uh, today we're going to be featuring uh, Krishnan. Uh, Mr. Ho is, going, is actually on his way. And uh, Miss, we're also waiting on Mr. Wozniowski. Um, oh, hello. And Hi. the fellow panelists have contributed a lot to our team and they're the reason why we're here today. And we're just having a hosting this panel to, you know, um, thank them and then learn more about the experience on their team. And this team has come a long way, actually. Um, if the audience has any questions, feel free to put it in the Zoom chat and then the panelists that the panelists will answer accordingly. So first, uh, please introduce yourselves, what you're currently right now doing right now, as in like, for example, like a job or further study, internship organization, and what is it about? And uh, would you like to go, Krishnan? Yeah, sure. Um, so yeah, hi, I'm Krishnan Srinivasan. I was prospect class of 2013, and I think I did robotics all four years I was there um, and served as the president in my senior year. And so I know Mr. Riccardi from those days. So it's nice to see him after so long, uh, almost like eight years must be now. Um, and, oh, it looks like Timothy's joining too. Timothy was one of um, the members uh, of, like, like we graduated the same year. So we were in robotics uh, together throughout the, our entire high school time. Um, and what I work on currently is actually robotics um, at, in, at the graduate level. So I'm a third year PhD student at Stanford. And um, my research is primarily involves um, sort of like machine learning for robotics. So we do a lot of um, uh, application of like sort of machine learning concepts like reinforcement learning, which is just sort of learning through trial and error and ex collecting your own experience and data and applying that to specific problems within robotic manipulation. So we're looking at um, how to grasp objects and how to sort of like re-grasp and sort of move them um, with sort of fine motor control um, kind of skills. So that's what I work on now. Um, so it's a little bit different maybe from um, some of the robotics I was doing you know, in high school, like I didn't know anything then, <laughs> um, but it was still a really, really great learning experience and got me really interested. And uh, it definitely is like a sort of common thread through everything that I've been doing. So it's really great to reconnect with, with all of you. Wow, nice, that's very interesting. Um, yeah, like I really like uh, how the robo software functions with the robot, especially like the machine learning is completely new. Like I think we should inevitably like incorporate that into our robots in the future. That's gonna be something very different and very innovative. Um, and then our next panelist is uh, Mr. Ho. So the question is, um, what was, uh, please introduce yourself and like what your current like state, like what you're doing right now is and like if you're like, doing a job or some kind of like internship and then what is it about? Hello? Sorry, can you guys hear me? I just wanna make sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I my, Thing hasn't been as impressive as Krishnan's, um, but basically, um, I like. You're just uh, being modest. No, 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 no. Like he's doing pretty impressive things. Um, basically, um, I went in as, um, well, right now, um, I went in as uh, I went to San Jose State and graduated, um, with a degree in electrical engineering and a minor in computer science. Right now I work at a startup called Toronto Wireless as like a software engineer. Um, and uh, yeah, I kind of just do that. Um, yeah, sorry, I didn't fully hear your whole question. I was um, dealing with something else. Um, was there anything else? 
Uh, it was just uh, introducing yourself and then what you're current, like what you're currently doing right now and what's about. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Right now is just um. I'm a software engineer and uh, I will help with our systems team, um, write tests and um deal with their data visualization. Um. So it is a pivot from my degree in electrical engineering, um, which I got. Um. But it it's been great. Um. So far. Nice. Nice. Um. So like, do you like learn some a couple like software like the like for example? So you did a minor in computer science, right? Mm -hmm. Like there's also there's also certain types of like specific uh like software that's learned through electrical engineering, just out of curiosity. Um, it it varies from school to school. Um, but at San Jose State, um, there was some. Um, there was definitely wasn't much. I think we learned basic Python. A lot of it was also like hardware programming with um, like um, Verilog, um, which is pretty close to like dealing with like just straight hardware um but at san jose state there wasn't as much um as what i've heard from like other schools i see interesting interesting all right great answers keep it up the next question is what led you to choose your field of interest and what did it take to get there um and then we'll start off with mr uh, krishnan yeah so um I guess what probably kindled my interest in robotics in general is definitely like doing first robotics and participating in FRC in high school. Um, and I guess in college, I just sort of leaned more towards um, like data science and machine learning and didn't actually get to work on any sort of robotics while I was an undergrad. Um, so I went to I went to undergrad at Yale and I did a under I did a degree in sort of computer science and math so it was like a joint major and in that I guess I sort of focused more on like the machine learning side of things um, and after I graduated I sort of realized that I had this interest in research and so what led me sort of back to robotics was really um, kind of thinking about you know which type of research I'd be interested in like I tried out different sort of areas like research areas by working in different labs and sort of saw like which one um you know fit what I was interested in the most and then after doing like some research with a professor at Yale whose name was is Aaron Dollar who works a lot on sort of like the mechanical engineering side of robotics but like was also interested in doing some things with computer science and machine learning um, on some of the robots that he was building um, working in that lab really gave me a sort of perspective of like how robotics and machine learning sort of went hand in hand and so then that's what led me to i guess applying to grad school and then moving back to the bay area um, and sort of yeah bringing me full circle i guess wow nice nice very interesting um and then how about you, Mr. Ho? Um, I mean, first robotics definitely helped um, in help choosing my major. Um, when when I actually went to San Jose State, I actually went in as undeclared. Um, and I was actually trying to get into computer science. But eventually, um, I went and chose electrical engineering because I did have, I felt like I had like a bit more experience um, dealing with hardware because of robotics and I felt like a bit more confident doing that and um, I mean I was able to talk with like some of the other mentors that we had during the time um, and because um, I, I came back and visited I, I'd like talk to them and they gave me like some good advice on like what they were doing and like why they chose like their thing so that that kind of like helped me like choose electrical engineering although I did end up in uh, software um, but that's kind of how I um, was able to like that's kind of the reason that I chose it. Um, and I think in um, in San Jose State, we had a robotics club that I was part of. And um, that definitely helped a lot too. That helped me gain a, a lot more experience as well. Um, so yeah. Nice, nice. Very great answers. Keep going. You got this. Um, the next question you is- too. You're doing great <laughs> with the questions. Thanks. 
Um, the next one is, what do you enjoy the most about your field and what do you not enjoy about your field? Because, you know, there's always pros and cons to everything. Uh, would you like to start, Mr. Krishnan? Yeah, sure. I, uh, I guess um, that's like a really good question. So hmm, I'll start with the pros. Uh, I feel like one of the, so maybe I'll like kind of drill into like specifically maybe the area within um, robotics that I'm working in. So what drew me the most to like, I guess, manipulation as an area was, um, I guess, yeah, humans have a lot of sort of like, I guess, intuitive sort of skill and knowledge and with regards to dexterity. Like we're just able to like do a lot with our hands. Like we're like, you know, able to build things, use all kinds of tools and like are just very like general purpose, like able to do a lot of stuff. And I think there's sort of two limitations in robotics, uh, sorry, state of the art, I guess, robotics right now that limits robots to being able to do some of those kinds of, um, you know, manipulation type uh, applications. So for instance, just like, you know, why can't we have a robot like working in a fast food restaurant, like doing all of the different tasks of like flipping burgers and all that stuff. Like people are starting to really get closer and closer to that. And they're already like some restaurants now that like have fully automated um, sort of server or like, I guess, cooking staff. Um, but I think that what may make it not very economical at the moment and also what may, may make it sort of just a challenge for mainstream adoption is like, I guess it's hard to get a general purpose robot that's able to do like a large number of tasks in a large number of dynamic environments. Like usually you have to really constrain the process and the whole like environment down to like a few variables that are then repetitive and sort of able to like, I guess, be very like controlled. And so, and you still need like humans sort of like feeding bags of food into like these hoppers and stuff like that in order to get the robot to like actually make you a sandwich or something. So it's really like, there's still aspects of it that have that, that are difficult to automate. And so I think a lot of that just comes down to um, on one side, I guess there's sort of innovations in hardware that need to be made to, for instance, enable like tactile sensing, like the way we have like, you know, skin on our hands to like be able to tell us like how well we've grasped something and gripped it in order to know that we can like move it safely. Um, those kinds of like, there's just no equivalent right now, I think in like robotics hardware. So that's like one sort of challenge. And then the other is, I guess the, the learning component of it, like how we're able to sort of like dynamically adapt to like new environments, just because you've never been in a room before, it doesn't mean you don't know like how to like, I don't know, look for things and like be able to like put things together in order to like make a sandwich in someone else's house, for example. That's like one of the sort of AI problems that people like to think about. Um, so I think that that's what drew, draws me to this is just sort of like just the boundless sort of applications, creativity, and just imagination that you can have in this sort of area. And then I think the cons are really just like, things are really, really difficult. <laughs> like it's hard, like, especially if you don't um, define your problem very, very specifically and concretely so that it's solvable and tractable so that you can actually like make progress on it. Like those are like the really difficult challenges. Like it's kind of like, you know, you can get really excited about like working on something really cool, but then unless you like bring it down to earth and like really ground it in things that are feasible. Um, and that's just always the sort of, I guess, interplay and challenge between like science and engineering, right? Um, is like bringing things down to something that you can make practical and like actually show working on like a real robot as opposed to like it theoretically working in some sort of like hypothetical. So that's the, yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course. For the long experience. Answer. Yeah, is always the best. And back to what you're saying about the automated robots, like the robots can do a lot of things now. Like we're making them like super advanced. They can, maybe even a robot can be a lawyer one day, but the, sometimes like the robots, that's like amazing. And sometimes there are a couple of limitations. Like for example, like, you know, a robot might not offer the same connection as a human, but, but still like a lot of the things, like for example, homework, have you always thought about that homework robot, right? <laughs> yeah it could perhaps use like a, some random like i don't know just like api or something 
and then just grab the answers and then just feed the, feed them. But uh, yeah, robots <laughs> very like I really like how like how you said like there was a wide um context where you can make anything like just super large, very creative. I would say. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, no, I think uh, I'll just say that, like, I think homework robots are almost almost there. Um, they oh, may wow. not be able, the problem is that I don't know if they'll be able to, like, grab your pencil and be able to, like, write for you. But just in terms of, like, uh, I don't know, I, I, if you look at some of the, like, latest um, models in, like, whatever, doing uh, not just being able to, like, read a piece of paper with, like, all of the objects on, like, all of the characters on it and being able to like sort of understand but also like parse like being able to parse natural language and stuff it's gotten really good at that so mm -hmm. yeah oh okay um yeah yeah there's actually actually like found out of some like restaurants in china that start using some very automated stuff pretty expensive but uh very innovative actually it takes like you know like less time from other people uh, how about you, Mr. Ho? Um, what is uh, what do you enjoy the most about your field, and what do you not enjoy? Um, I guess so. I guess my I would consider my field right now just purely software. Um, I think so. I guess well, it's not purely software, but that's kind of the part that I'm working on. So I think one thing that like frustrates me a lot is like the debugging aspect of it. So my job. Um, revolves around like this testing hardware itself so when you're always like when you're doing these things with software and hardware it's always like a back and forth of who's at fault and that's always pretty frustrating um because if you like see like like you you see you look at your data stream and you wonder if it was your your test that like processed the data wrong or if they're just like some bent antenna somewhere and that's always like pretty frustrating actually but the the one thing that i like really enjoy about like my field is the the problem solving aspect of it um being able to be given a task and like breaking it down into like smaller problems and like tackling it and then figuring out like what the best way to do it and because when you solve a problem there's also implications of how you use it later down in the road like if you like make like a function and you use it for something else you want to you want to be able to not make it so complicated that you're putting so much time into it because like maybe in the end it won't be worth it um versus like making it good enough that you can still use it like later down and like what you did is not so specific um but yeah <laughs> yeah yeah nice nice yeah i remember debugging is always like it, whenever you're writing like a large program at a software engineering level i'm, I'm not like a software engineer i'm still a beginner programmer yeah. but Yes, it's still like when you start writing more lines of code, the, this is like the debugging happens. Like you have so many methods, functions, and it's all hidden in one, or it could be even a small syntax there. Like I have, I have taken probably months to try to solve my, um, so have you heard of the game Mastermind? Like the board game? Yeah, I think I'm so. Trying, yeah, I'm trying to make that in code, but <laughs> thing, yeah, yeah, like, like you said, kind of have to kind of have to like break it down and then make it to like simpler problems but just i'm always spending a lot of time and you gotta really simplify the stuff yeah yeah language are you using oh Sorry. java java oh good is it is it with a gui um okay. not yet that oh, is all command line all right uh, that's yeah the way to go. yeah it's all I, command I line I'm still <laughs> but yeah maybe one day it'll be a gui like guis like I guess you have to memorize a lot of things, but uh, I don't know. Just GUI is just stuff. very finicky. It yeah doesn't always do what you want it to. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Um, yeah, I could have done it in an easier language, but Java was the one because I actually learned Java from my AP computer science class. Like it was the first time I actually coded. So, I mean, I know like you experienced people could have told me that, oh, come on, I could use Python or something, like something easier. <laughs> and yeah. It's so the next language to learn. Yeah. Wait, sorry, what? Java is useful to learn. So it's good that you're using that. Yeah. Um, what do you do in your field on a day-to-day -day basis? 
Uh, I'll let Tim go first this time. Okay. <laughs> and yeah, don't don't call us Mr. Ho and Mr. Yeah, Steve you just Austin. call me Tim. It's just fine. Call us Tim and Krishnan. Yeah, we're, <laughs> we're yeah, um, not that much older. Yeah, on like a day to day basis. Um, a, so I manage a lot of our test pipelines, at least for the systems team. So for me, when I come in, I like check our pipelines and like make sure things run. And if they aren't running, then I usually have to chase down why and figure out why it broke and like come up with like a solution because we don't want to have it fail the same night. Um, and then the rest of it is kind of just like fixing up like tests um, because we do run tests on software that's always constantly changing. Um, maybe like certain things or certain settings have like changed in like their name or like their output. And we always have to like deal with that. Um, sometimes we get lucky and the software team tells us ahead of time, but most of the time we don't. So we kind of have to catch it and like deal with it like that. Um, and then, um, yeah, so a lot of it is also like talking with the systems team because um, most of the time when like things are changing or they want something implemented into the test, um, they're the ones that are driving it. So we always have to like talk to them and sit down and kind of understand. Um, definitely not to like their level, but at least enough to be able to do like our part. Um, so there's a lot of like talking and like figuring out like what it is we're doing. Um, but yeah, the rest of the day, I kind of just uh, spend my day like programming, solving problems. Um, whoever like comes up to me and talks, we usually like talk and like figure out <laughs> what they need to do and stuff. But yeah, it's pretty, that's pretty typical for me. Nice, nice. And do you go in? Like, are you, are you like, yeah. Going in? I mean, I, I started more? going in yesterday and that's why I was kind of <laughs> late because I was driving back. Um, but not everybody's in yet. So I don't know why I'm going into. <laughs> yeah. We've all, we've all gotten our shots. <laughs> My second shot yeah. is on this Saturday. So I hope. Uh, I mean, good luck. I, I wish you the best. <laughs> yeah. I heard the second shot had some couple side effects, right? I Yeah. Yeah, you're going to turn into a mutant. <laughs> <laughs> literally. Um, not literally, but kind of literally. Um, yeah, should I go? I guess, uh, yeah, my, my work is currently like sort of, I guess, hybrid as well, like in the sense um, a lot of time spent on the computer probably the whole day um and it's a combination of like sort of i guess um working from home and then in the lab we have a bunch of robots so um i don't necessarily work on the robots every day but it's more like i test a lot of things in simulation first uh see whether the algorithm that i'm working on is uh like sort of working from the simulation standpoint and then from there and then also like for these simulators like we have to actually like develop the simulator ourselves ourselves and even maybe add like i don't know features to other sort of simulation environments that are provided in like open source so like a lot of the time is and, and also everything is like in python so it's like a bunch of research code in Python that's like really poorly documented and <laughs> spending a lot of time trying to like understand what someone else did and why they did it this way. So that kind of issue happens a lot. So I'm sure Tim runs into those kind of issues from time to time as well. Um, yeah, it's mostly my code though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, my code is also not at all documented. So I have to, that's like the last thing that you do after submitting the paper. <laughs> is you go back and like try to make your code a little more readable so that when you put it on GitHub, people don't like yell at you, but they'll probably still like yell at you, which is good. I mean, if they're yelling at you, that means they're, they're trying to use your code, which is like, it's a win-win, right? So. That's called spaghetti code. Yeah, a lot of spaghetti code. Research code is is not, not the same as industry code. They're two different, they're worlds apart. No tests are written. Like I should honestly like, ask Tim for some help and like have him teach me. Yeah. <laughs> what were you going to say, Mr. Cardi? I think you're muted. Yeah. A lot of industry is spaghetti code too. 
I, I definitely agree with that. <laughs> <clears throat> mm. Well, that's good. That means that I'll maybe be able to get a job in the industry <laughs> after my PhD. Because <laughs> I know how to write spaghetti cut. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Spaghetti code. Hmm. Yeah, you have to realize that if you write it so poorly, no one else can understand it. You have a job for life every time they want something different. They have to come back to you. <laughs> we did that to the government a lot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's why it's called code, because you're writing in code, right? Mm -hmm. Or maybe not. I'm not sure. <laughs> writing, code, programming. Yeah. I mean. Yeah, programming and writing in code are two different things, I guess. Oh wow! I actually didn't know that. Very interesting. No, 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 that was a that was a joke. Writing in code, like <laughs> you're making it hard for other people to read. Got it. Yeah. Um, the next question is: What aspects of your career or the field of study do you find similar to robotics? Um, As a metaphor, then... or? No, more generally. <laughs> yeah, more generally. I know. I know. Like yours is super similar to robotics. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, robotics is really interdisciplinary. Like, it requires expertise, and yeah, it, from so many different fields. So I feel like, even though Tim and I are doing very different things right now, like. I feel like we probably have a shared understanding of each other's work to some extent. Um, and that's largely thanks to maybe how, I guess, robotics has forced us to consider other parts of a system beyond just the coding part of it. Um, you know, parts that involve the sensors, wireless communication, um, like all of these different things kind of come together in robotics. And that's kind of what's maybe why it's, I guess, such a good thing to start at an earlier age in like high school, because you get quick early exposure to a lot of things. And then um, you see how everything gets kind of connected and works together. Nice, nice. How about you, Timothy? Um, yeah, I think a lot of, I agree with a lot of what like Krishnan said, like a lot of it is like being able to like see the other side. And because um, in robotics, when you are like writing software or like, designing some like PCB or something, you have to like consider all the other aspects that go with it. You don't want to like design it to a point where it's like so, so much harder for like the other team to like deal with it. And that's like definitely true with like my current job, like, because the, the side that I'm working with is like a hardware company. So even though I'm just software, I still have to understand like, okay, there's like a hardware aspect of it. And we have to like be mindful of that. And like what they're doing and stuff like that and i think like that's one of the main things and like being able to like communicate and like understand and all that is i think is like one of the similarities um but i think that's like pretty important like regardless of like where you are too interesting um what skills or experience did you gain at 213 Besides having fun in Mr. Ricardi's garage. <laughs> that, that, <laughs> yeah, that sounds great. No roboticists were hurt in the process. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what skills like? Or experience? Yeah, I think, um, I think the more concrete skills around like um, programming and stuff. I definitely developed those skills a lot more in college, but like just getting an early exposure to those things um, was nice, I guess, in what I did in, you know, in high school. Um, and then, yeah, like getting an early exposure just to like a lot of things that I didn't even directly touch on our robots, but like, you know, other people were working on. Um, was, was really interesting and like much later on when like I had to like 3D print some of my own stuff like I just remember you know the gearheads I think uh at one point you guys got a 3D printer right is that am I just making this up in my head or um actually our um the our the people who are part of the design have their own 3D printers so in a way like it's not there's not one centralized to the team 
but we have mm-hmm. more like in our own and then we just print them all and then send them all like at a specific place like to one like specific task got yeah. it okay. we also have Prusa. that team has been she get more now <laughs> oh nice yeah. nice <laughs> that's so cool yeah you can never have enough 3d printers when you're working in a in a lab i actually 3d printed my own um robotic hand like gripper um in one of the labs that i worked in and uh yeah, like putting that together, uh, that whole experience really brought back a lot of memories to like assembling robots in the gearheads because, you know, just just being like careful and mindful about tolerances and all of these things because it needed to be very well um, sort of like tensioned because it was basically like a gripper that was like a, a low cost gripper that used um, springs and like pulleys and like essentially little wires to, um, sort of exert force between the two fingers, um, but then had like motors attached to pull the wires on those pulleys. Um, yeah, making that like calibrated, I guess, so that it wouldn't like have way too much tension on one side and like not enough tension on the other side, like all of that, just the balancing act of that um, made me remember like how careful you have to be about like, I don't know, putting parts on a robot and making sure that you don't have too much give and pull on one end because then on the other end, it'll just like make everything not be aligned or something. So I feel like that was the, that was also another, I guess, thing from the gearheads that I remembered much later on. How about um, you, Tim? Yeah, so I definitely picked up a lot of uh, debugging skills at, at Robotics. Um, I There were definitely a lot of moments where we like compile and run a code on the robot and it kind of goes haywire. And I, I remember this one specific time we, we compiled a code, and you ran it, and then the robot started like spinning, like the wheels are going like kind of crazy. And then we stopped it and then everybody looked at me. I was like, Tim, is your code? And I was like looking through and like trying to figure it out. And I think Mr. Riccardi was like, wait, I think we like crimped the wire backwards. And like, that was like the reason why like the robot was spinning. Like that was like one of the moments I remember. Well, there are definitely times when it wasn't the hardware's fault and it was my fault. And like learning all those things and being able to like narrow it down, um, definitely one of the bigger skills that I picked up. Um, I did like learn a lot of like um, Java. Um, and that was like one of the other things I picked up. Um, and like, I think like gaining like the confidence to like know that yeah, I can do it. Like there was like a there's like a level of like initiative that you needed to take in robotics. Um, like there were like goals that you went to, but like there's initiatives that you have to take. Like oh, I'm gonna like do this. And, like gaining that confidence to like be able to do it, I think I kind of like picked up and realizing that I could do it um, was one of the things that I picked up as well. Yeah, nice, very good answer. Um, yeah, basically I felt the same way because. I'm actually a rookie. I joined robotics uh, last summer. And then I was thinking, oh, no, uh, a lot of people know stuff already. And then I didn't know stuff. But you basically join to learn and then uh, experience. You experience a new, a whole new thing. Like, for example, um, like, for example, the hardware. I have not worked with hardware in my life, almost never. But then, like, uh, when it came time, it, so now we do, like, basically now we host, like, um, Oh yeah, if you guys heard, our lab, um, our lab got destroyed. So we had to move. Uh, we had to add an alternative option. Who destroyed and, uh, it? Yeah, they did. They they destroyed it. Yeah. Like yeah, basically, I can't this stuff is still going on. <laughs> yeah, it was the old. Uh, <laughs> it was the old cafeteria, right? Like, do you remember? Yeah, the old, yeah, yeah. It's endless, isn't it? I thought you guys would have like a more permanent place by now because we were dealing with it when we were there. And I thought, all right, <laughs> I'm sorry, we, we understand. It never ends. <laughs> oh my goodness. Why does this sound so familiar? <laughs> my God. Yeah. And then I guess when we're back around that, they are building us a new building, like a permanent one. Oh, so really? So we have the cafeteria for like four or five years. And then this past year, they took it down from the student union building. And then on the other side of the campus, they are building uh, a building pretty much to our spec. And then uh, 
it's going to be a little smaller, but I mean, for you guys, like anything we have is like huge, uh, yeah. <laughs> like a garage, but it'll still be ours. And then it's supposed to be done like 2022, uh, but timelines always slip. I mean, timelines never slip. So uh, <laughs> have that eventually. Maybe they should also build you a robot with the building. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Since yeah. you... <laughs> we're gonna be for, we're gonna be the first to claim that building first. Well, it's, it's built for us, so we should, we should get it. Yeah. Hmm. Um, and then, what are some cherishable memories that you have on being on this team? Like, are you having fun moments, stuff like that? <laughs> <laughs> definitely when we went like there was like some like overnight um like trips that we took to like the competitions and then like we were <laughs> we were like like fixing and like testing stuff in our hotel room like the the day before the competition those are always memorable because <laughs> like last minute debugging is very memorable you try to like yeah. uh like go to sleep and there's just like parts everywhere I was like, all right, I just, I'm too tired to just go to sleep. <laughs> but the competitions, I, I always had fun with. Um, like, just seeing, like, how um, other teams did it um, and, like, how, like, they're structured and, like, yeah, that was always pretty cool. Um, and then just, like, hanging out with, like, teammates and stuff. That was always pretty fun. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I've got a question. After you've gotten out of robotics, have you kept up any friendships with any of the other teams? Because I thought it was a great community. I don't know that it's something, but people on other teams were part of the, the joy of playing because you got to know other people and build relationships. And some of them carry a long distance. I don't know if you guys have any, but I still have friends in all the other teams. Um, I, I personally don't really. Uh, maybe Krishan has. Um, but <laughs> yeah it's always nice to run into someone from like frc after yeah graduating from high school and being able to talk about what those competitions were like and stuff like that but i guess the um the individual people like from other teams like i guess since i went to school like really far away too from this area i didn't get to see as many people from um those robotic teams I didn't stay in touch with them but um I did stay in good touch with uh the other teammates um that were there like my for my year like Tim um to some extent Chris uh so yeah I mean not not really other teams though but it's always really but, cool randomly <clears throat> to like meet someone and find out they were in like FRC um, Cause like once you like realize that point, then like you just have like a whole bunch of things to like talk about, and like differences in like how things like were done and stuff. That that was always pretty fun to do. Yeah. Yeah, our, it's been a while since our team has been like uh, this team was founded. In, do you guys know when? <laughs> Probably two thousand eight, right? Because. We started high school 2009 and then started one year before us. So I we think. started in 2008. Our first rookie year was 2009. And uh, it just went downhill from there. <laughs> <laughs> As in, we were gaining momentum. <laughs> yeah. I, having been involved in a number of years, I can tell you there are a lot of good memories. There's a lot of good videos online. Those that were not around for the rookie year, that was the amazing year. We went San Jose Regional. We went to Hawaii Regional. We went to the Atlanta Championship. And uh, that was a lot of fun because what you're learning is problem solving, communication, collaboration. Those are skills for which any discipline you go to will serve you well. But yeah, so that kind of history, I have a lot of it if you ever want to go that far. Interesting. Uh, so I have a question, Mr. Riccardi. So were you an old uh, mentor of our team? So the beginning started, I worked at BAE Systems as a systems engineer on the Bradley Fighting Vehicle. And some of the guys there were big sponsors. The company was a big sponsor of First Robotics. And they said, look, we'll, you start a team, we'll give you 
sponsorship and funding. And my son was a freshman at, at Prospect. And I said, sounds like a deal to me, too much fun. And it's just as much fun for me as it is for you guys as the students. And so that started the activity there. And from there, I started, I don't know how many years I did that. And then I also started Gateway Robotics in San Francisco. They wanted a team, some friend of mine asked me. And then I helped start uh, Westmont Robotics. And so it's been a lot of fun doing that sort of thing. It's an activity that tests your brain, gets you thinking. Challenges are rewarded with accomplishment. I mean, that's the kind of thing I enjoy. Uh, with COVID here, I know I was trying to help another team get started, but you know, with COVID, you haven't got much choice. And without a place to start, it's really hard to do a hands-on program without a hands-on environment. So I, there may be another team coming out. But if you want to go back and capture that history or any of the videos or any of the pictures, I have tons of them. I haven't lost any, I don't think. And so when you get as old as me, history is your forte. <laughs> Oh yeah, I'd love to see some of those pictures and videos. <laughs> you know, I have a lot of them on YouTube and stuff like that too. Oh, okay. I'll look up here. I think, I can't remember any. There's some on, on there. And if you want any more, I can put more on there. I can start a, or contribute to a YouTube channel just for Prospect Robotics if you want. Yeah, I'd be happy to see these old stuff, history of our team. One day, one day we should actually compile a video. Pardon me? One day we should actually compile a video of our team history. Uh, you can. I, I think it's it's always fun to do. It's, you know, it's sort of like everybody's history. There are times we don't remember until we see the video how much we enjoyed what we were doing. Even if it was frustration, that's what you, you worked through and enjoyed. Hmm. It's, a, it, it's a fun program for anybody, and it's about learning real-life situations. It's different than classroom. It's different than anything else. It's you got to get a product out on the board. How do you do it? Well, figure it out. <laughs> yeah, there's a question in the chat. Um, so, Mr. Riccardi, how did you come up with the name Gearheads? And what things did you hope would carry on in the new generations of Gearheads? So, I've also been a marketing manager. And so, one of the things you do is try and figure out your branding early. And <laughs> while you want input, I, I like to think of that we looked for some name that would carry forward, be representative of, of the team and what you want to do. I mean, no offense to Cheeseheads in Michigan or Cheesy Poops in, in Bellarmine. I, I think that everyone on a team deserves to have some name that they think they can stand by. And Deerheads <laughs> popped into my mind, you know, for the most part. Uh, and there are one or two other teams that are gearhead names, but they are in remote places. And so it sounded like a good idea. And it's funny how often that name has been used in a lot of places. There's a documentary movie called, uh, I think, Gearheads, that they did for public television about four teams and followed them through the process. And that's always good to have. And so... Carrying on to generations, what I found, what I enjoyed was that I'm good at starting the team, getting the stuff going, but the real joy is to watch and see how the, the team starts performing on its own. Uh, when we're at the very beginning and, and in the early days, it was like I felt I had to help as much as I could. But there was a time when my son turned to me and said, don't worry, dad, we got it. And that was it. You know, that said that the team was self-reliant, willing to go where it wanted to go. And that's all you're really asking is to give the initiative to the team members, to teach them innovation, teach them uh, what you want to be, is what you want to do. And I thought that's the real joy of, of the generations coming. I feel prospects well on its way of being self-sustaining and doing what it wants to do. It's like anything else. That's the, uh, the new generation and that's already achieved what I hope for. And thanks for planting that seed and you know contributing to so many of our of our journeys in such a impactful I, way. I think everybody benefits. It's so much fun. Yeah. Yeah. It's one of those things where 
if you don't do it, I think everyone's at a loss. It's so much fun to do it, so much creative. Um, it, I'm saddened that COVID cut it short a little bit. You know, you, there's a lot of places you could have had a lot more fun. It's a hole in your life for that, at least that, that aspect. Um, how about you, uh, Krishnan? Basically, it was the what things would you hope would carry on to the future generations? I feel like, yeah, Mr. Riccardi gave the best answer. Um, and there's no, there's nothing I really have to add to that. I mean, just, uh, yeah, I think that maybe, you know, keeping in touch with us and like, I'm so glad that we, we got to do this today and like, we would definitely want to, um, you know, continue to stay in touch with you guys and see how things are going because it's part of our collective story. Um, it's something that we all share, even though we haven't met in person yet. Um, I feel like, you know, I already kind of know you a little bit and I feel like we have some shared context to talk about things. So I feel like that's, uh, you know, something that should continue forward. Yeah. Um, what about you, Tim? I mean, Mr. Cardi is like just kind of just like said it all. I mean, I personally actually like really love the name Gearheads. I remember um, there's like this foam like gear that you could wear. I was like, <laughs> yeah, this is great. Like everybody else, you need like some intricate like mascot or something. And like you just put a gear as like this great. <laughs> you could forget it. You could, for you could, could forget all of the costume stuff and just like go to a store nearby and just like. Yeah, just put a gear put on your head. Everybody has <laughs> a mascot. <laughs> it, you know, there's one video. I'll have to send you guys out the link as soon as I find it. At, at the Hawaiian Nationals where we were the finalist. And the gearhead hats and everything were being worn. And it's like the capture of the, the primo moment of, of the team at that time. And you can see so much enjoyment and joy out of the team it, it's the kind of thing that it, it changes people i think for the better and it gives you reward for your efforts and there's nothing else in life but that that'll do that as well if i find that link i'll i'll put it on the chat. interesting yeah eventually um so have you heard of this thing called ftc the first tech challenge yeah, so basically we we're gearheads and then we decided we made another uh, like a, a kind of sub team or an, it's not sub team, but it's kind of like, um, I, don't, I don't know how to describe it. And it's gear toes. You got the gearheads, gear toes, um, gear shoulders one day probably. We get another one. Um, and yeah. Our, yeah, gearheads. Great. Yeah. That was a great name. Thank you, Mr. Riccardi. Um, this almost looks like I'm wearing a gear on my head. <laughs> nice, nice. You know, we, we had a lot of luck when we did, when we started the team, we had a lot of money. You know, the first year we spent 30 or $40,000. We had a lot of support and a lot of fun. And I, I guess that's part of the, the enjoyment there is to, have fun and seek to have more fun every time you do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not finding my video. I'll have to post it up there and get you guys out. Yeah. So, uh, um, Krishnan and Timothy, I have a question. How were, were there like any, like, so you guys, been, have you guys been in the robotics competition before the first competitions? Yeah, so um, real quick, I'm probably going to have to sign off soon, but I, I don't mind taking the last couple of questions. Um, mm -hmm. Have we been in robotics? Comp was your question, what was your question again? Did you? Oh yeah, have you been in a question? first competition before? Yeah, no, I mean, that's what we did. And then like, like, uh, before like what was like, di is there anything different like from, like, I think it was pretty similar, right? Or was it kind of different? Oh, do you mean like recently? Like, I don't know. I think the last competition that I was in 
was probably yeah I don't think I've been back to a competition I guess in since since high school so I don't know how it compares to uh the current sort of uh competitions but I don't know I think Tim he did mentor the the team for a couple of years after right uh I don't know if you saw any major changes uh to how they were Organized. Yeah, I mean, the competitions were held at, at San Jose State, so it was pretty easy for me to just, like, come back and, like, see what was going on. I, In terms of, like, change, um, I think there are definitely, like, teams, like, when I saw, like, what they're doing, it was, like, it's pretty crazy. But then you realize that they're, like, Bellarmine, they just, like, spent a whole bunch of money on it. But I thought, like, the gearheads, like, in terms of, like, the way they were, like, making stuff, it was like leaps and bounds ahead of like what we were doing like initially when I was part of the team. Um, I think like, like a lot of it was like we were like finding like scrap parts and like putting together. But now they like took classes and DNs and were like CNCing things. I thought it was like pretty crazy uh, when I when I like saw the team. Um, that was pretty that was pretty cool actually. Um, in terms of the competition though. Um, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure because like the games like kind of like really different like year to year so it's like pretty hard to like compare in that sense because everybody has to like make a new robot and stuff like that but i think like the ui looked better <laughs> yeah it, you know i think uh the team progressed as it aged very well um when we started it was very rudimentary it's ace hardware robots and then when you guys got there, it got to be more technical, more involved, some machining done. And then in the advent of the, I'll call it the next generation with Shane and, and a few of the others, it was uh, CAD design and machining and stuff like that. So the team progressed well. It continued to grow and learn and pass it on to each other, even to other teams. And you got to applaud that kind of uh, membership that, that really continues the program you know, on its own without having to have somebody tell you this is the curriculum, the team continued doing it all on its own. So I've been very proud of the team. It's, it's been one of the things that I would say is, is a stunning accomplishment because the team is the accomplishment. They've done it all. I appreciate all the teams as they went through there, but Prospect had just matured in, in spite of a lot of things <laughs> on their own. And I'm happy to see that. Uh, what was the team like back then? Like, what was, like, the atmosphere? What was, like, kind of... Um... <laughs> I can tell you stories that I enjoy. Um, we started out, like, I, way back when, with about six kids in my garage just for some place to work. And it was cold and it was rainy and my Corvette had to be parked outside, but we, we survived. But I can tell you that there are times where a new freshman would learn how to solder and the next thing i know he was having so much fun soldering he was cutting the wires in the robot just to solder them back again or a girl would learn how to how to solder and put things together and then she would tell her dad and her dad wouldn't believe her so he had to come in and see what was going on those are the kind of things where you watch little things happen and reach out to people and and they appreciate the difference of learning something that they enjoy and that did themselves. And six of us, seven of us, eight of us in the, at night, working the robot was fun. And in those days, it was about getting hands on. And whatever they screwed up during the day, I had to fix at night, but that's okay. In the end, you had to have a robot that worked and have fun. It wasn't about building and designing a robot. It was about learning how to do those things. And so the early days, early days by any stretch of the imagination. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll get the videos out somehow. Yeah, I think that pretty much captures the vibe. <laughs> it's crappy. <laughs> yeah, I think that was a lot of it. And like a lot of it was also like, oh, what if they happen to close down our like workspace i think that was one thing that i guess like is common across like from our year to your year um i think i forgot what room we were using before but they they were always talking about like actually using it as a normal classroom 
And I think that's what we're always afraid of too. But it was always like really fun. I, I remember one night when we were like working late and I think it was like the day before. And then we were having fun, like just putting LEDs on the robot and like two cops came on the campus and we thought we were in trouble, but they just like came and like took video and pictures. I thought that was pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess I'll contribute that the most frustration that I had was that it was a fight to try and find a spot and it, it never got easier. If Mr. Slimak had not volunteered using his room or even when we used the adjacent room and the band took it for storage, you know, it, the frustration part was that others couldn't see the administration and the, and the board of, uh, the Board of Education there in Campbell did not appreciate what it does for education and learning process. And the, the space you work in is so critical to the learning experience that it's hard to explain that to others, but that, that would be the downside of having to work with that. Nice. And I think uh, before uh, Christian, I think you have to go soon, but uh, I guess I'll introduce myself. Since I've been hanging around, which is Kyle, I've been the president for the past two years, and I have now joined your ranks as an alumni. Uh, graduated like two weeks ago, but yeah. I don't know. It's cool, like yeah, actually seeing you guys come back. We should definitely do something again. I don't know. Uh, I think this team can do free food. I think we can attract more alumni to come back and just chat because that'd be cool. But yeah, thanks for sharing your experience and. I guess I'll be back here maybe someday doing the same thing. Yeah. I mean, this this team has a long way to go. Like, we've started in, like, 2000, uh, 2008. And then now, in, in, I, I've, I see great improvement. Like, we've, we've increased. Like, there, we started with seven people, and now it's uh, always gone up, always gone up. You know? Um, and just, I really, like, that we're going so basically uh, during the summer um our team like recruits new freshmen and then we just really want to see what's new to the table you know like a new experience a new um i guess and there's also a question in the chat uh, to krishna and timothy what were your biggest takeaways from being an frc that you feel is useful now i mean i think that the idea of cooperation is something that I distinctly remember being very FRC. Um, and I think that, you know, whenever I had like a, a group project or I don't know, something like later on where I would be in an environment with like other people who I like worked with, but also other people who I like, you know, worked with in the sense that we didn't collaborate directly, but we were in like the same environment working on the same sort of problem. Um, I always felt like that spirit carried through. And so, yeah, I've kind of felt connected to, you know, what we did in first, even after, uh, even after graduating. And so I feel like, you know, it's nice to meet you Kyle uh, as and now fellow alumni. Um, I definitely love oh, yeah. to catch up in person soon. And yeah, it's, it's so great to connect with um, the current iteration of the gearheads. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Um, yeah, I think kind of like echoing like what like Krishnan said, like a lot of it is just like um, being able to like work with other people well. Um, and like when like everybody's like doing their own thing, like being able to understand, like see their problems and all that. I think that that was like, the one thing that I like really like and like it definitely like helped me like as I went through like the rest of like my education and stuff like being able to like work with other people well was like pretty important to me and like being able to like start learning those skills like early on in like high school definitely I felt like gave me like a better edge um and all that just for a positive feedback, we started with very few people way back in 2009, but three or four of those members are still well, still the best friends with my son. They meet every Sunday for Dungeons and Dragons. Like, it, you know, you build some relationships through that that, that continue on. It's uh, just a fun way to build 
what I'll call is the family. And, and where I work is a family too. We still meet 20 years after retirement. We still meet with the people we knew. It's your life. You'll be able to do all of those things and build those kind of friendships that, that last a long time by sharing all that activity, whether it be your career, work, or robotics in high school. It's your way to determine what you're doing. I wish you all well. Yeah, cool. I think it's probably a wrap up, but thanks for stopping by. Uh, if you ever have the chance, just totally come see. Uh, I guess we're out of a storage container right now. We'll have yeah. a little bit more in the future, but uh, you should definitely see our robot we made last year, or I guess two years ago. But I think it was a, a pretty big improvement. Over and that, was in, that was unfortunate. The competition got canceled, right? Because you guys went there and then they got canceled right as you got there. Yes, but that is old news at this point. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Uh, I'm yeah, I'd love to, to see it. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. totally see a robot. I don't know if you've seen it all, but uh, here's a link to the video or a reveal video they made over a year ago at this point now, which is kind of crazy, but yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Um, thank you very much for attending. Today has been a long night. I know like we might have lost a couple of panelists on the way, but you guys stood like you guys pushed through. I'm very proud of that. Very honored to see you guys alumni where you are right now. Just big family. You should have a alumni night one sometime. Yeah, no, let's let's organize something over email for sure. I'd love yep. to see the robot and see everyone. All right. All right. Cool. Well, Thank you very much. See you later. All right. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Have a good day, everybody. Me too. Good, good to see you again, Mr. Cardi. Bye. Nice to meet you. <laughs>